there is work to be done, and we are the people to do it. Hey, welcome to the Full Earth Workshop. My name is Doug, episode six of our slot car restoration. We're talking a 1965 Chaparral 2, the coolest slot car, in my opinion, from 1965. Let's take a little review of how this car is looking after all the work we've done. Uh, you can see a lot of sanding and a lot of filling has produced a really good under section. The nose cone area has been the scene of a lot of attention because remember that is all filled with milliput. But I think the uh, details look very good so far. Let's continue. Today we're going to do the headlight little cut lines on the front section. It's doing and redoing until the line work looks correct for the front headlights. Now every chaparral that was racing seemed to have different spacing between these headlights. So I am using as a reference the Bridgehampton race. And these are the cars that raced during that year during the 500 mile race and the spring race. I've got to admit to you, there are better tools to use than an X-Acto blade for cutting out the shut lines. There's one by Tamiya that is a tool just for this purpose. I don't have that tool, so I am doing it with my X-Acto blade. What I do is I use the really sharp edge to do a deep cut, and then I will use the side of that blade, which is kind of V-shaped, and very carefully I start pulling it across that shut line, and slowly it starts to widen and deepen. This was kind of a long process. As a matter of fact, I think it took about 20 minutes or so to get this correct. Then you can see with a nice spray of primer, things look pretty nice. You can see very good definition. Well, these little guys were hiding in the background, just waiting to be forgotten. Uh, not today, though. These are the Zeus fasteners, which were used back in the 1960s to keep the bodies, which were usually made of fiberglass or aluminum, attached down to the frame. Here you can see a little bit of that bulk wire braid that I found on eBay, and it was every bit of like $4.50 for six feet of this stuff. Much better than buying the NOS stuff, and I really don't think you'll be able to tell the difference. Let's jump into enhancing our instrumentation on the control panel in this cool Chaparral 2. If you noticed in the image, the rings around the instruments were silver. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a couple of diameters of aluminum tubing and make little rings from them. And I found out that using an X-Acto blade is perfect for aluminum. Uh-oh, time for the birth control glasses. Lock the doors so no one sees. Uh, except for me. Brass is a little too hard for this, but aluminum perfect. And then just sanding the tops and the bottoms of them, they're going to be a little bit longer than what they'll end up being because we're going to sand them down once we paint. So we have to make sure that they are anchored down really well to enable sanding afterwards. <laughs> you know why they're called birth control glasses. You wear these things around your wife, no kids are coming. Here come the Zeus fasteners. Man, these things are so small that even with the birth control glasses that we've got to put on, uh, you can still go blind. Be careful. Well, I found the best way to put these little etched pieces on is by putting a little dot of glue, super glue, into place, and then you take your X-Acto blade, do a little poke, and drop it off where it's supposed to be. And these little fasteners, I think, are going to be perfect little greeblies, too, to indicate where a switch would be. At this scale, it will look exactly like a panel part. After another spray of primer, you can see that these new parts kind of sink into the background and look like they should be there after all. I want you to take a look at these eBay decals that I bought. Pretty impressive. Look at the metallics on the shell logo. Making metallic decals is real man stuff. <laughs> Good job. Let's focus in now on the steering wheel details. The steering wheel is chromed, but very lacking in any kind of detail. So let's add that little trim ring into the center. Again, we're using the little slices of aluminum tubing, using some super glue, and then putting it down with a little squirt of hardener. I'm going to use one of these little drill bits that's meant for rotary tools to drill out the tiny little holes on the inside the support structure of the steering wheel. They actually do a great job and really don't melt the plastic at all if you keep the speeds pretty low. You notice that I put some brass tubing on the steering wheel shaft and that makes sure that it, first of all, it looks a little more heavy duty 
and it lengthens it, which makes the installation a lot easier. I've been making the move over to water-based paints for a while here, but every once in a while it's kind of nice to go with these old tester bottles with enamel paints on them because they leave a nice gloss sheen and the surfaces are really hard. Remember this part was chrome plated and this enamel tends to stick really well. For some reason people's eyes tend to go to the steering wheel on a model like this, so anytime you can put this kind of detail into it, it really adds to the realism. Now let's jump into that brass roll bar. Remember, we replaced the plastic one by folding this brass tubing, and we've made a real improvement, first of all, in the durability, and I think it's going to look great too. Also, it takes paint well. Time now to evaluate the driver. Remember, he's in 124, so he's very small, and we've done a bit of modification to him by adding these seat belts made out of styrene, We've also put a bit of putty into the center section and tried to add some detail. We've also added a little section to his left leg so it doesn't look so strange when he's in the car. Uh, and I think overall he's looking pretty solid there. We wanted to make sure that we had all the seams filled and that it was at least sanded so it didn't look like it had been modified in any way. Putting this paint onto his goggles, I have found becomes a lot easier when you first put a dab of water into his goggle area. Then when you put on these acrylic paints that are water-based, it just flows beautifully so you can see the outline where the rubber sections would be. Now I have to admit that I am not the painter that my son Landon is, so you know, give me a little slack here. But what I'm trying to do is add a little bit of modeling to the seat belts to make them look realistic. Flat color is not really kind to realism. So let's make sure we give it a little bit of highs and lows just by dusting it into place. And because it is water-based, you can move it around until it finally dries. Now I've taken a very diluted section with just a tiny bit of dark gray and I'm starting to move it around the suit area and again you can move the paint around to kind of lighten or darken that area but it does give a little bit of a modeling effect to it. We're also going to use some modeling effects here on the face. We start with a very light colored flesh color and then we're going to take slight grays on the darker areas while it's still wet and try to bring up that definition. Now we finally are starting to paint this body that we have worked so long on. And we're going to have to end up masking and putting different colors in. But uh, this is kind of an exciting thing. The first coat of Tamiya paint is just a dusting. And then I slowly start to build that up, still trying to keep a glossy finish. And at this point, I think we're going to leave you. We're going to set it down, let it dry, and we're going to jump into detailing this in our next episode. If you like what you saw, subscribe, because part seven is coming up next.